Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Prickly Hedgehog. Something different today. We're going to do a tutorial on how to start up the F14 from scratch. This was a viewer request. It's been a long time coming. So this is my first tutorial of any kind in DCS World. So bear with me. It may be a little bit muddly. Uh, I'll do my very best to make this as smooth as possible. Uh, I won't be going into huge amounts of detail with every system in the aircraft. I'm going to take it as a given that you understand some of the basic features of this particular plane and also that you have uh, the appropriate controls set up. But uh, by way of reference, I am using a Thrustmaster HOTAS and I do have the increase decrease axes on the throttle quadrant uh, mapped to zoom. And I think it is this by default, and this allows me obviously not only to see outside of the aircraft or to zoom in on distant objects, but also to zoom in on things I may need to see around the cockpit during startup procedure. So that's just something I recommend, just having some sort of access command uh, mapped so that you can actually zoom in on things. All right, now I'm not a real pilot. I don't have any real aviation experience. This is stuff that I've picked up from watching other people's videos. Also reading Chuck's guide, if you're looking for more information, which are really easy to follow. And also the NADOPS um, manual is available for download uh, to online. And you can garner quite a lot of interesting information about this aircraft from that too. That's a little bit more involved. It is actually, you know, the real deal. So if, <laughs> if that's something that really interests you, you can garner, like I said, as much nerdy information as you want from that. All right, so let's get started. Second caveat here, I guess, is to remember that the F-14 does not have an APU. So we're going to need to set up the electric and air external to get this aircraft up and running. So we're going to talk to the ground crew here. And we'll start with the ground electric. Chief, turn on the ground power. All right. Copy. Ground power is now on. Cool, the ground power's on, so we'll just go ahead and switch the oxygen on straight away so we don't forget that. And we're going to turn on the radio. There's that. And we'll also turn on the hot mic, which allows me to talk to the Rio. Obviously, having the radio on allows me to talk to, in theory, to the external crew without having to yell out the side of the plane. Now, we'll also get our onboard air going here as well. Or well, the external air, I should say. Chief, connect ground air supply. Copy. Ground air supply is now connected. Okay, so let's check with the uh, tower here too and get permission to start up. Sushi, in field, one, one, request startup. Okay, we'll go back to the parent menu here so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so now we have uh, ground electric and ground air. We can test the lights here real quick. Make sure that everything is shining up as it should do so that if something wants to go wrong or fail, we know that that has actually happened and not that the bulb has burned out on the aircraft. Okay, so we have our... Uh, fire suppression system there and we have our instruments there we're all good now uh, in the real world it takes about half an hour to set up this aircraft have a nice flight um, but of course in DCS it's uh, a lot quicker than that uh, because there's a lot of manual you know application that isn't uh, technically being uh, covered here all right so we have our lights going there well, now we need to also leave that up that's our emergency hydraulic fluid for the flight controls there we're going to check that in a second we're going to turn this pump off as well those th two things need to come off okay so now we have uh, enough power and stuff ready to get the jet started we will also need to hit shift e and that will arm the ejection seat and now we can talk to jester sure and get the jet started up and it will take him a few seconds here to uh ICS com check Get things rolling. He's one and wants to know that we can hear him. Roger. So I'm just shift uh, hitting A there and then shifting my head with my track IR. That's the other thing I use to move the needle to the appropriate uh, response. There, pretty straightforward. I'm closing the canopy. That's a really big canopy. There it goes. You do not want to get your fingers caught in there. 
Ready to start. Okay, cool. So now we're going to crank the engine, and we're going to start. This is the engine cranking uh, button here. So we're going to start with the right one first. Again, making sure that our throttles are set to off. Looks like one of them's a little off there, but either way. And we should start hearing some things whirring away here, although it'll be hard to hear because I've turned the sound down a little bit. Anyway. So this is the flight hydraulics here, and this is the um, totality of the, the hydraulic fluid. And I usually, it's at 20%, we can start this now, but I usually let, let that uh, build up pressure there. And then we can click the top of the throttle. And we should start hearing the engine spooling up here any second. There it goes. See the RPMs there. We see increase in temperature. And I think we're looking good there. Everything looks normal enough. Okay. So now we want to check to make sure that the hydraulic pumps are uh, not leaking anything. So we can do a little test here by cycling this emergency flight hydraulics. Click it into the low position here. We shouldn't see any degradation in the pressure there. And again, no degradation there. So we can click that off. And by now we should be able to see that we have authority over some of the plane's uh, control services. So that means we have good hydraulic control there which is a, a good sign all right now the right engine is running that means we should have enough electric power from that engine to run the aircraft we don't technically need uh, the ground electric on anymore so we can turn that off Chief, turn off the ground power copy ground power is now off Perfect. And one of the reasons for this too is that uh, heat builds up in the aircraft when its own systems aren't uh, operating. So generally we want to avoid leaving the ground electric on for uh, long periods of time. In fact, apparently what can happen is that uh, the heat can build up in a way under certain conditions that could cook off ammunition inside the aircraft. I don't know if that's ever happened, but that's the theory that apparently is uh, a possibility. Okay, so either way, we're ready to go. We'll start with the left engine now, and we'll get that spooling up, and you'll see it'll run to 20% here pretty quickly. Very good. Doesn't take long at all. And then we can hit the left click there with the mouse on the top of the second throttle. And as you can see, things are starting to move here. They're all pretty basic looking controls, very analog, but while the aircraft seems relatively simplistic compared to some of the digital readouts that we get on modern aircraft, the F-14 is actually pretty sophisticated under the skin. There's a lot of redundancies, a lot of um, hydraulic systems, the wing sweep mechanisms are very uh, complex, uh, the engine management system is very complex, so even though it's all analog, it's actually, you know, like I said, a pretty sophisticated aircraft. Okay, so we're good there. We've got both engines uh, running normally. We don't have any uh, leaks these your stability um, issues will dif disappear shortly so let's get rid of the ground air now we don't need that anymore either the aircraft is uh, its own air systems are are running and doing what they should do so we can get rid of that Okay, so now our own air conditioning unit is running, and from my understanding, the F-14 had a really good air conditioning system compared to a lot of other aircraft uh, for its period. It's uh, kind of like a Cadillac, apparently, according to one Rio, uh, Dave uh, Bioberanek, that I heard a great interview with recently. So, so that's basically those systems up and running now in terms of the engine, but we also need to get uh, our INS aligned properly. So first thing I'm going to do here... Roger. 
is yep. have just a hit that to the fine we want it as fine as possible unless of course we were in a real hurry we needed to take off for some reason and we didn't need the fine uh, alignment and now we need to get our electrics going so we'll get the vdi going here the hud will start going up and then of course our hsd so that's up and running now and we can check here with the mode this would normally put it into radar mode where you can actually see the INS alignment here with this chevron going from left to right here. I think it actually just moved there. As the INS is aligning, we can see uh, roughly how long it's going to take. Once it gets down to this area here, it should either be aligned or pretty close to being aligned. And hopefully by that time, we should hear the alert from Jester that the aircraft is ready to taxi. So that's what's happening right now. In the interim, of course, we still have some other things that we need to activate, of course. So we have uh, the radar altitude, and I usually start with uh, the uh, altimeter here. Just with a right click of the mouse. That will get it out of that standby mode. We have our pressure here, which is probably fairly accurate. Uh, the FL should give us a, an alert to what that is. And then we're going to turn this and get the radar altitude system going. I usually set this to around about 450 feet but obviously you're free to set it to whatever you want and then a left mouse click with the mouse button will put it into its bit test there and we can leave that alone. So moving from left to right I'm happy with all of this stuff right now all this is going to stay off we're not going to accidentally arm anything we don't want, uh, say for example, the incident uh, that happened uh, during the Vietnam War on the Forrestal where a missile was actually accidentally launched by another aircraft and caused a fireball on the deck which the uh, um, Senator John McCain had to leap from his aircraft to avoid being uh, consumed by fire. It's a horrific incident, one of the worst on board an aircraft carrier in naval history. So uh, that's why we keep all these things off. Now, uh, left click on the mouse there, that should get our uh, artificial horizon up and running. As you can see, it's all very basic in the F-14, even the HUD here. Very, very simplistic symbology, nothing <laughs> nothing uh, too exciting, unfortunately, but it works and um, you get a basic idea anyway. Obviously, we have our tail hook over here, that's going to remain up, we don't need to worry about that. We have this set up, we have our lights down here. Uh, we can set up our anti-collision while we're at it here. Uh, we'll leave it on steady, we'll put this on dim, we don't need to blind everybody. And obviously there's some other lighting panels here as well. We do want to get our electronic uh, computer and uh, the radar stuff going on here as well. I'll do a bit test of the compass. Uh, all of that uh, it will take care of itself. On the far left of course we have the TACAN, which we don't really need to worry about and take off. We'll put it on the receive right now just so I know that it's on. Obviously we've already dealt with our radar. Uh, not radar, sorry, radio at this time, and then the stability, uh, stability augmentation system. This basically controls the yaw on the aircraft, uh, prevents it from making excessive maneuvers, which obviously is very, very important when landing, and obviously takeoff as well, because the F-14 had a kind of a dangerous rate of roll at low speeds, wherein it became, you know, quite unstable if you were to uh, rock the wings back and forth and this actually helped with that to prevent the aircraft from over pitching or um, basically losing control uh, particularly during landings coming into the carrier obviously it's a, a very dangerous time so um, but of course when you're in dogfights you will want to turn that off so that you have more um, uh, nose control attitude control over the aircraft just something to think about there so as you can see the chevron has moved nicely here and we're not too far away from having the aircraft ready to taxi here. Everything else is looking really good. As I said, it's a beautiful aircraft, so not, not too difficult to get started up. Now we can turn this back off as well. So that's just that hydraulic pump. We don't want that on while the aircraft is starting up, because obviously fluid is moving around the aircraft. We already set our oxygen. Obviously, if you were to get hypoxia, the game does mimic that, so by the time you've sort of got to about 20,000 feet in a lazy climb, uh, you'll notice that your uh, pilots start seeing double, and that things get a little blurry <laughs> in the aircraft. So if that starts happening and you're wondering if it's your monitor, actually no, it's the uh, game simulating hypoxia. Just reach down there real quick and put that uh, oxygen on, 
It's actually a very important part of the uh, the pre-flight check. Obviously, as I said before, we're not going to be doing um, post-flight checks or anything like that that we would typically conduct if we were a real crew, and that simplifies things here a little bit just for brevity's sake. Uh, let's have a look here. Obviously, for takeoff, we will have the um, uh, anti-skid. Obviously, will not be on for a carrier launch but it's okay for a uh, landing launch you can see that the flaps are down right now spoilers should be set to zero and uh, no strut is off right now that doesn't need to be messed with all right so really we're just waiting for jester here to give us the all clear but that's basically it we will cover the uh, wings here a little bit is the autopilot button here obviously I think our hook or our uh, so it should be set to um, field here that's the other thing because we're going to take off from a field obviously if it's on the carrier we'd leave that on the carrier and then we can go through the rest of these tests here we don't really need to worry about this quite so much Some of these actually don't. The emergency generator should be good. Uh, there's an automatic MAC leveling. And the wing sweep is already off. We can also, we don't have that on right now, but we can do a data link as well. And then the stick will show us. But one thing we can do, if we were on the carrier and we had AWACS, We could set a host to the AWEX uh, uh, rather than the carrier so that we could get data from them. And one last thing, too, we should also remember that uh, the encryption information, usually it's set to default as one. We can set that up as well here. Uh, obviously, those parameters can be changed depending on uh, your individual mission, what have you. I'm going to turn the mirrors off here for just a sec. And I can hear that Jester still flicking controls in the We're background. Taxi. And that's the queue that I was looking for. So pretty pretty straightforward. So at this point, obviously, if we were on the carrier, we would leave our wings in the oversweep uh, uh, direction. Or position is probably the better term there. And we can see we have uh, aileron, if you like, the rear ailerons. Uh, we have authority over those, and we can see we have authority. So we know our hydraulics are up and running. Now, if we, as I said, if we were on the carrier, we'd leave it in the oversweep uh, position. And then at some point, we're going to end up on the um, catapult, at which point we would spread our wings, which uh, this is eluding me right now. I don't know why. There we go. And you'll see that the wings will open out into the full position here, which is 20 degrees. And at this point, we would want to check the flaps. So we would be given the order to um, spread the wings, and then we're going to put the flaps down. And actually, to do that, we need to right-click and put that down in the down position. There we go. Sorry, I didn't have it all the way down on the, uh, the HOTAS. Otherwise, it will sweep back as well. And then we would click this close like that and we want to hit the master reset which allows this to stay in the auto position so that's pretty much it in a nutshell uh, for field takeoff obviously I when I'm taxiing I could leave these out there's usually enough space on an airfield to do that uh, sometimes I will just put them back in a uh, uh, say a, I don't know, a bomb position as an example just so that they're out of the way and I'm not Definitely not going to hit anything with them, but in an airfield this size is not so critical. You've got plenty of space, uh, but on the carrier, obviously an absolute must. Otherwise, you will uh, you will damage something, if not the aircraft, something else. So, just something to bear in mind. Other than that, yeah, it's pretty easy to get uh, set up. Like I said, this is not authoritative, and uh, there may be some steps missing here, but that's the basic get, uh, gist of it. If you want to get up and running, so I hope you find that helpful. Let me know what you uh, think and. Um, yeah, if you're not familiar with this aircraft, you're thinking about uh, thinking about buying it. Well, 15% off right now through the e uh, eShop, 
well worth it. And remember, not only do you get the B variant, but you'll also get all the other variants as well. So, fantastic aircraft. Okay guys, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the flying out there. Take care, and this is Prickly Hedgehog out for now, and see you another time.